Hello everyone, welcome back to GK Code Labs. So in this session, we are going to discuss about test cases and the code coverage. So what are test cases? What is the code coverage? Why test cases and code coverage are important in any project? And why it is important for you to learn about test cases and code coverage if you are planning to go into any live big data project. In this session, we will be discussing the test cases and code coverage from the perspective of a Scala application or Scala plus Spark application so that you can understand the importance of it if you are planning to move into any big data project specifically working on Spark and Scala. So first let's see what are test cases. So let's say I have a small piece of code. Let me build one inside my source main. Let me build a Scala object. Let's name it first use case. Let me extend the app so that I can use the main method. And let's say it has a very simple method as add to num, which accepts, let's say any one argument integer and returns an integer. And uh, let it return a plus three. So very simple method. So test cases allow you to test any of any piece of code that you write in your entire project. So let's say as of now in entire project, I have only one object. So first question, why do I need to learn about test cases? If I can test this in very simple way, I can print ln and add to num and I can pass anything and I can see what output it's giving. It's giving me eight. So very simple, uh, I can do this. Uh, why do I need to uh, learn about test cases and all? So the reason for that is this might be fine for your testing, but when you have to deliver this code to your client, he might not have seen all those outputs. And uh, let's suppose you have 200 other functions and uh, he ideally is not supposed to run everything and uh, see if this is uh, going correct or not. But when this application goes into production and something fails, uh, then it comes to you. So ideally, uh, not, to, not only for Scala, uh, for any other language, there are some testing frameworks that uh, are used and they have a little bit different style of testing your code. And that turns out to be very helpful once you have to build your code and deliver somewhere. So let's see a small example. For Scala, for writing these test cases, we'll be using a very popular library that is Scala test. So how does this work? First of all, uh, you can see the documentation on scalatest.org. Go to install and here are all your dependencies that you need. So I am using a SBT project here. So if you go to build.sbt that resolves all the dependencies, you can see I have added this particular dependency. Scala test dependency version and test so same thing i have added here if you want to practice just add this uh, second dependency the first one is not really required as of now add it and once you add it you can refresh your sbt structure and this dependency will download all the jars in your project now coming back uh, let us write some test case and see how that works first of all and uh, try to test this function to that to do that uh, you can see this is a standard SBT or a Maven structure uh, wherein you have a main folder then Scala inside which you can create your Scala objects or classes traits and uh, similarly inside your SRC you have a test directory as well. So this is a standard structure. So expand your test and inside your Scala test. So this is your test resource. This is your main resource. So inside your Scala test scala folder you can write the test cases so right click new and here you have to click on scala class make sure for writing the test cases you have to consider class not the objects to write the test cases it's an ideal practice to follow the name convention although it is not required but uh, just to make more meaningful interpretation Follow the same uh, name convention. Uh, suppose you are writing all the test cases for the functions inside your first use case object. So you should name it something like first use case test. 
if you choose it something else it's perfectly fine but uh, this is the ideal practice okay now for this test class i have to implement some of the methods to write my test class as per the scala test library as per this so let's import few uh, important ones just to get started first is your any flat spec so there are many uh, specifications that can provide you a different format of writing the test cases or different style of writing the test cases one of which is any flat spec that is most commonly used the other ones you can see in the documentation as of now you can see this is the any flat spec or go to user guide and selecting testing styles so here you see there are many more styles that you can implement by different implementations any fun suit any flat spec that we are using any fun spec all, all these can be used for writing test cases just how you write the test case can be as per your choice some uh, you might feel uh, comfortable in writing the test case some way so you can go through all of this what styles we can write the test cases any word spec any free spec so many are there so we'll be using uh, any flat spec but main idea for this session is to understand the importance and significance of writing all this okay so how do we write this i can write it in very layman language that what was my function name add to num you can write my add num it's not uh, you don't have to mention exact function name whatever message you want my add num function after this should then here you can write what what are you expecting out of that function should what are we doing adding 3 should add 3 in this is how you have to write so basic structure from this only someone can come here and see okay his he has some add function and he is expecting it should uh, add 3 this is your function definition we are we are not calling this function yet now inside this you can write the test case so where is my test case my test case is in my first use case object so first use case dot add to num and i can pass anything like let's say 4 as of the definition what it should return it should return me 7 so here you can write if I call first use case add to num and pass 4 here, this should be, so should is sort of a matcher that matches the value. So that also you have to extend here with should matcher. So all this is inside your matcher, I think it's matchers yes so once you add this should be then you can give the output should be 7 so uh, as of now you might be seeing that uh, how this is i mean we are just calling it from somewhere else and adding some uh, adding the same type of assertions so yes but slowly we will see how this is becoming um, good for us and how this will increase the code quality when we deliver this project so let's see first let's run this okay so i got a message here if you see uh, a green tick test results so all my test results are passed nothing no nothing as the output but if i try to change here should be eight if i run it you can see uh, we got sort of an error and error hierarchy also inside first use case test my add function uh, our name was should add 3 so add 3 is getting picked up from here and should uh, is this definition should add 3 you can see expected was 8 but actual was 7 yes actually it will return 7 but expected was 8 but main thing if you are going to build this jar this jar built is going to fail because we have written a test case for our object functionality so at least we are uh, touching uh, our functionality and testing it if it is going as correct so fine 
we saw it is going to fail so let it be back to 7 now we got one importance of our test cases that even if we are testing it let if the function is not returning what we expect our jar build can also fail that, that saves us from one of the goof up that we could make if we are writing a wrong test or wrong function okay the second one let's say in the same function what i will do i put a condition if a is less than 10 then return a plus 3 else if a is greater than 10 give a plus 30 and uh, right now your function will give you error because all the return types are inside your if or else if so what if nothing occurs so it has to return something let's return else let's return 1000 now let's run our test case once again still my test is going to pass so what was the difference my tests are passing i can deliver this to my client it's perfectly fine but do you think that my entire function was tested i am passing here 4 which will pass through my function if this condition was true it's not going through this condition it's not going through this condition for that reason every client might ask you before submitting your code that what is your code coverage so first let's see the code coverage then we'll discuss on to that so to see the test code coverage in your intellij you can right click on your uh, package wherever you have all your test and you can run run scala test in scala or whatever folder you uh, are right clicking that will come here with coverage so with coverage option let's run it so okay my test passed test passed it is one so everything went as expected but on the right hand side you can ignore meta inf you just see what actual object we are testing you can see on the right hand side it says 50 percent or here itself you can see sort of message in gray 50 percent classes and 50 percent lines covered so 50 percent classes ignore it for now because it also considered uh, considers your uh, built classes main thing to consider is 50 percent lines covered so once you submit your coverage to your client or wherever you want to submit it they might directly go and see your code coverage they don't have to see any of your test cases or classes they can directly see run it and see how much code is covered so there are uh, certain standards that uh, different clients might ask you that your code coverage should be 80 percent 80 more than 80 percent or 90 percent so that's very sure that if uh, your code coverage is below what he's expecting he might have his uh, standards or some uh, few few things in the code that cannot be tested for that reason some margin is giving for 80 percent 85 percent but this doesn't look good so without even seeing the code he can come that uh, your code might give you uh, some goof ups actually why is it happening because yes we are just considering only one condition so let's try to improve it slightly what we can do another same thing my add num function here i will pass something greater than 10 so i'll pass 14 so which condition will it go now this one and here it will add 30 so 30 if it will add it should return me 44 now let's run it run with coverage okay it will fail because by default it uh, matches the string after this after should so if both have same this will say that we have a duplicate test so we can write another thing should return 44 this side is fine but actually you should give something more meaningful but uh, it won't consider even if this this side is same so let's run it okay all my tests are passed so that's fine both conditions are checked now but if you see only 83 percent lines are covered still so what more can i do if i have to improve it even more if i can go i have only two conditions less than 10 and greater than 10 then i will straight away i will come to know just by seeing the code coverage percent 
that there is something wrong with my code if i cannot do anything more so if you see any number would be either less than 10 or more than 10 and still i am returning in something in else so obviously this you can see the red mark here in intellij this is not covered so apart from 83 percent it will also also show you what part is getting covered what is not so green part is getting covered red is not so clearly i can see it's uh, a wrong code because this condition will never be called and hence by taking this coverage as a parameter of code quality you came to know that uh, your code needs some refactoring so that is how uh, code coverage can be important so what if i make this condition as greater than 10 and less than 20 let's say let's refactor it now my code was we are passing 14 so this will happen now let me add another test case which is return thousand and i can give anything as 55 that is more than 20 and it should return me thousand now let's run it now you see 100 percent of my lines are covered so that is the importance of maintaining the test cases and your code coverage this code coverage in actual projects might not be directly viewed by client in some of the ides there are many tools like sonar cube and many ci cd tools are there that can provide you a coverage report but anyhow your client might be interested in your code coverage so i hope in this session you got to know what is the importance of writing the test cases what is the importance of using any testing library and how your code coverage can be a parameter of your code quality so that was all for this session thank you guys for watching this if you like this video please hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel if you have not already done thank you guys see you later mm -hmm.